contest rules say that contestants will circuit bend an existing device to create a unique musical instrument that can be easily recreated by others while following these guidelines. The device you bend must be battery powered with a power no greater than 9 volts. The project must be completed for a t total cost of $70 or less. And this includes the device you bend and all the parts used to bend it. You'll need to create a bill of materials, build instructions, and photos sequencing the build step by step. I feel very strongly about the part of the rules that emphasizes that the circuit bend should be creatable by others. So to this end, I use components that are readily available. So in this circuit, for this one, you can buy the pieces from Walmart and Home Depot, as an example, and still be within the budget. If you use alternative sources, or you have some actually old devices are lying around which you're not otherwise using, you can actually make two devices that for less than the budget. For me, there's no difference between software and hardware. Uh, as an example, um, recently Moog introduced the uh, Mini Moog Model D iOS app for iPads, iPhones, etc. And a couple of years ago, they reintroduced the Mini Moog Model D uh, rep, uh, using the original plans. Likewise, the, uh, there's both a, you can buy a Model 15 modular synthesizer, and you can also buy a Model 15 iOS application. For this project, I use several tools to cut and drill wood and other materials. When using tools of any type, you should always make sure that you understand how to use the tools safely. Here I have safety glasses which help protect my eye when I'm using things like drills and saws. Some tools such as this battery powered screwdriver can also be used as a drill. For instance, when you're drilling, always put a piece of scrap material underneath the object so that when the drill goes through, it doesn't uh, ruin the, your table surface. Using uh, battery powered circular saws and, and other tools such as that and things such as these reciprocating saws you always have to be careful about what you work, how you're holding the material you're cutting make sure it's secure because you don't want to slip and uh, take a finger off or something that would be very annoying same thing's true when using things like craft knives these are obviously very sharp designed to be and you want to be very careful that you're cutting away from yourself and so if you've slipped or something you don't take the edge of the finger off. Uh, some tools such as glue guns and soldering irons obviously get very hot and if used, uh, not looked, used correctly uh, could even can obviously lead to burns and potentially fire hazards. Paints and glues, um, if you read the labelling, should be used in a well aired space because the fumes and the vapours they give off are potentially harmful and or um, explode, well, combustible. So this year's circuit bend basically is what I wanted to make last year. So last year I was going to do this uh, guitar type device and I started with various designs and was starting to very severely over engineer should we say. So the idea with this one was basically you have the phone at one end, 
keyboard down the other, and then this point, and somewhere here would have been the uh, guitar strap mount. But the problem is that this is actually very light, and the balance point's in the wrong place. So the key wouldn't balance properly if I put the strap where I wanted the strap, and it was taking a long time to get this cut out. So sort of over-engineered, and basically I ran out of time. So uh, I used uh, the last year's phone and um, last um, keyboard. And when I powered the phone on, uh, that still works. So I powered the phone on. So even though it's been powered off for a year and I've just charged it, um, it has no Wi-Fi access and has no network um, phone access, so when I bring the browser up the uh, application still's running, uh, still runs from memory. So that's been sitting in the machine for basically a year. Uh, so if I uh, turn the keyboard on, Pair with the uh, and so it's still working. So, it's not bad. So, what I plan to do is to uh, put some different software in here, since I, it's just another attempt, and uh, we'll see how it comes out. So, I have the phone from the keyboard from last year. And I have a new old phone as it were, and a keyboard that I'm used for this year. So depending on what you use, you can actually make two of these for $70. Let's go through the features of this year's circuit then. Let's get rid of the, the guitar strap. So the uh, body this time is made with um, this was a shelf I purchased um, melanin I said that's my shelf or you can buy an MDF based shelf and the nice thing about these materials is they're much heavier than um, the original wood I was using and so you do need a bit of weight so that the uh, so the guitar will sort of hang at your waist nicely because guitars are actually not that light sometimes so it does hang nicely so I have um, so the piece of doweling which is one inch dowel and with these two pieces of two pieces of scrap either side, the dowel fits between them nicely, they hold it in place off from going up and down, and then because I've got a hole through the piece of dowel in the middle, and I put this peg here, I can basically put the doweling so that it's one end's here, one end's down the bottom here and the other end up, and I'll switch it around, and the I cut a flat in the piece of doweling and put a glued on this uh, piece of wood at both sides to attach the keyboard and mouse to. So it's, the height is adjusted so that the piece of wood here lies flat on these pieces here. And originally I was just going to use a rubber band to hold it in place. 
I found that wasn't good enough with just a band here. And then I tried uh, putting magnets down the length of the dowel and, and on the body. And that worked okay, but again, it still wasn't very secure. So eventually, I because I had a spare cup hook, over, hook, hook less, I put a cup hook here and added a little bit of extra doweling on the end of, the, of each end, which I can just poke in the cup hook. And that holds it nicely, stops it from uh, falling. And then a simple, much, much smaller rubber band has to be hooked over. It keeps it in place enough to be used. So it's very easy to uh, unhook the rubber band, flip the unit around. And put the band back. <coughs> there you go. So it really it now meets the uh, design aesthetic that I wanted, which was um, one of those Easy Tops video. I think it's called Legs. It's where at one point the guitarist spins his guitar around. Um, I thought that was very cute, and this is sort of allows me to spin around the uh, unit. So I so in this mode, this works like a guitar. You can strum it, and in the other mode, this is now. A synthesizer sound, and this was an XY pad, so you can assign um, two of the synth parameters to it. So that was the uh, basic design, um, and it's worked really well. The um, pieces that uh, turned out to be I had to do was the speaker on the back of the phone needed a. Uh, also, I need to cut a notch out so that the speaker could be heard on that side. And the battery compartment and the on-off switch of this particular USB keyboard, I had to cut a notch just for those so I could turn the, the keyboard on and off to change the battery. Obviously the phone is the phone um, charging port and headphone port are here. Of course the phone can be used um, in Bluetooth mode, so you don't have to worry about uh, wires, so you can use it with a Bluetooth speaker, or you can plug in headphones, or you can just use the sound coming out of the phone speaker. So uh, I think it's really, uh, really simple design to put together, doesn't take long, doesn't take a lot of skill, um, so that's, hopefully people will really enjoy this design. Now the other um, thing about this design is, yes, it's basically, even if you buy everything brand new, you can make one for still less than $70. So uh, you can buy the phone, if you don't have a spare one or an old one lying around. Um, if you want to use your existing phone, you can um, just use a couple of rubber bands to hold it in place rather than super gluing it, uh, rather than hot gluing it onto the piece of wood. Um, that's, having this notch at the end helps to keep the bands um, in the right place. The uh, Bluetooth keyboard, you can pick them up for as little as $10 or less on Amazon. Now, and you can go into Walmart, I picked this one up, at a Walmart for 20 So that still leaves me $20 for everything, but yes, yeah, $20 for everything else. Um, the wood comes in at about six dollars. Dowling is about three or four, depending on which long length you bid, you buy. And so it really is uh, well, well worth making one of these just because it's so much fun. So this is my uh, guitar. So I have a keyboard. So you can do various things with that. And then I use the phone here, which has the auto the sound, with um, 
I have four different synthesizer parameters. So I have um, VCF mod depth, pitch bend, uh, LFO frequency, and LFO um, uh, LFO OSC oscillator mod. So. <laughs> So one of the problems with the phone obviously is that if you swipe down from the top edge it uh, shows the notification area type of thing so the problem there is that um, you don't want to do that while you're strumming. So I found this piece of uh, old well, CD case lying around and this seems to be thick enough to insulate the screen. So what I will do is I'll cut a, see if I can cut some strips and run it across the top and bottom edges so that the um, it doesn't swipe down. Oh. So the controls here are relative for um, depth, but it resets on like, when release. Likewise, the pitch bend resets on release. So this control, both the uh, both the controllers I've used are I've set to release, reset on release, and on this one. LFO frequency bend resets on the release, but the uh, the um, LFO frequency is accumulative. So on the keyboard, I had to uh, glue down these two keys because if you press those keys, so glue up, glue, so they can't be pressed down. These two keys because they would uh, again they would uh, change the display on the phone, which would uh, again ruin the the thing. So the same thing here, I glued these so they can't be pressed. That would change the software. So um, I have. Uh, I could change the wave shape. Oops. Between square, triangle, and saw. Also, I also have a uh, distortion drive type shape. So I've got three different drive shapes. There's a linear. Then two with fairly nasty curves. So I'm changing the drive shape. Modified as much as at all, basically. 
So, uh, so we've got quite a decent range of effects and different sounds. <laughs> of this device is I can undo this rubber band and lift off the keyboard, turn it around, and put it back again. Hook the band back up, the rubber band back up again. Now it's in, instead of being in guitar mode, it's now in guitar mode. When I switch, so uh, I can basically with the guitar mode, you strum this section, and those X Y controllers are now here. And then the fingerboard over here now provides chords. This is minor chords. Sorry, these are major chords. Oops, 
flash when you're not using it. That's just a it does change colour anywhere you put your finger. Uh, let's see that. So uh, sort of starts off oops rotate this keyboard. So it has a uh, mostly red. It goes sort of to white and then sort of up uh, I can't I need to change the colour like you can see it changing colour. That's uh, just a simple sort of just uh, visual indicator. Um, I'm happy to put a lot more of the effort into the light show type things. So it just highlights the uh, active uh, strings. to make last year but uh, over engineered and gave up and made the uh, work stat instead and this is a modified version of that same sound engine so uh, I'm very pleased with it so what I'm going to try to do is describe how the software works so looking at the code some people might think about it 
as one of these Moog work stats. Whilst other people might even be able to imagine it looking like this with a lot more detail. So what I'm going to try and do here is describe how the software works. So the first part is the start of the file. The start of the file um, is basically boilerplate HTML. HTML is the language that the web page is written in. So this is the start of the synthesizer object. What this implements is a very simple subtractive style synthesizer. VCO LFO filter. This software was written to be used or can be used with web MIDI. So internally it sends MIDI messages between the components to make the changes. So when you press a key or you get a note on event, it generates a note on event object, sends it to the synthesizer, which turns the note on. If it gets a note off object, which turns the note off. If it gets a filter cutoff control change message, it will change the filter cutoff, etc. So what this synthesizer object is, is a, say it's a set of software components. These are defined using the web audio standard. I have um, I create an oscillator, a wave shaper. I set create some gain nodes, which are like variable voltage control amplifiers, and a filter. I then use the connect function to basically wire the components together to form the synthesizer. I also initialize some of the values of the different components so that they either usually quiet um, or have a sensible initial value. So this is the main piece of code that handles the input to the synthesizer module. It decodes the MIDI data. This part of the code is where I'm decoding some of the control change messages. So this piece of code is where I define names for the various MIDI message values. This makes it much easier to use later. The software is basically divided into two components. One part is the graphical interface, or the user interface, and the other part is the sound engine. I've already see, shown you how the synthesizer is basically put together as a set of web audio components and there are many different uh, attributes that can be changed. The user interface is a piece you interact with so it, has to, it handles the keyboard input, mouse input and because we're using uh, phones and tablets, touch input. The input pieces basically have three functions. When something starts, like, like when you click the mouse, hold the mouse button down and move the mouse around and let go. There's three things. Start, move and end. Likewise, when you touch the screen, move your finger and lift, the, lift your finger up. You have touch start, touch move and touch end. So this piece of code handles the MIDI control change messages which are 7-bit. What it does is it tracks when you put your finger on the control and how you move your finger. 
this is basically a two-dimensional control so in a XY mode you can have two values being changed as you move your finger around the screen. These are relative controls so what that basically means is that it doesn't matter where you put your finger down initially what it does, what the software does, it calculates the difference between where your finger is and the edge of the control and where the current value of the control is relative to the extreme values the control can take. And it then scales your movement such that when you get to the edge the control has got to its minimum maximum value. One of the components that you see on the screen is an XY pad. The XY pad is defined by the location on the screen it, it, it draws into and your finger moves around in and the two controls that are attached to the X and the Y dimensions. So one of the things I've done here is I started to add some visual effects to the controls to make the display a little bit more interesting. So not only is this a sound synthesizer, it's also a video synthesizer in a simple way. This is an XY control and it implements the XY pad on the screen. When you define an XY control, you define the, the shape, which in this case is a rectangle square, that you define where it is on the screen by specifying the left, top, right and bottom values of the screen coordinates. And for the XY control you can specify two parameter you specify two parameters these can usually be the CC7 or the CC14 objects the grid control is a, an array of objects usually n by m and in this project it's mainly used to implement the strings which you strum as part of the guitar. So each node in the grid control can, it has its own object which can be whatever you need it to be. So what the control does basically is when you place your finger somewhere in the grid control it works out which cell or square or what you want to call them your finger is on when it entered the, uh, you touched it or you moved into it, as you move around inside it, and when you leave it, and then that allow it sends that information to any object that you've attached to that square or that cell, and this is how the strings are implemented using a grid control, which is one by six. Now in the end I made it 1 by 8. Uh, I don't use the top and bottom cells. Uh, this is just for various reasons. Part of it because the top and bottom of the screens are covered by the plastic shield so that the uh, notification area doesn't get turned on. 